All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes in the studio each week and just uh, fields your questions. Do you ever think you'd be doing this for a living when you're in high school, college? No, not at all. Really? No, no, no. I figured I'd leave the family business far behind and move on. And think like in high school, who wants to stay in their little town when they're in high school? I I've like always this. wanted to own a small business. Always. That's true. You have. I've always. In fact, we started mm -hmm. our first business. Yep. We were in college. Mm -hmm. So we recreated your wedding bouquets out of silk. So you'd have them permanently for your, you go press that dress, put it in the closet, let the moths eat it, and then uh, have your silk bouquets and you can have your, I guess, kids and, and play with them later. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> All that those was our things first business. we thought were so important. Yeah. yeah we like, used to hey. put a, a an ad in the uh, ASU. That's we dated mm -hmm. through college at ASU. Go Sun Devils. And uh, we put an ad in the local mm -hmm. college newspaper and people would come. That's it's kind of fun. So anyway, I've yeah. always known. Well, yeah, small business, but I didn't know. I mean, my degree's in education. I figured I'd be off doing that. And well, now you're educating people about gardening here on the airwaves across northern Arizona. Well, that is true. That is true. <laughs> so what kind of questions we got this week? Well, first we have a question from Dan, who's out in Chino. He's starting to see small grasshoppers yeah. in his garden area. And he wants to know the best way to take care of those, deal with them before they eat everything. Yeah, grasshoppers in, in Presque Valley, Chino Valley, Paul, and that whole valley section going up through there. Uh, they don't just grow grasshoppers. They grow grasshoppers on steroids. It's a yeah. new kind of, not new, it's an old kind of plague. <laughs> they, they described the first few books of the Bible, plagues, uh, the last book, Revelations, of plagues of grasshoppers and bugs. That's They got that envisioned from uh, Prescott Valley grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't, if you're not careful, they'll take over and they'll eat everything in their path. Literally, the ground can be moving uh, it's, it can literally be that bad if you're new to that area. Okay, now everybody's afraid now. Now what do we do with it? <laughs> okay, so, oh, so here's what to do. So grasshoppers have an exoskeleton. So they start out in the fry stage. They start to hatch. You walk across the field, you'll see the weeds kind of jumping around. Things are jumping around. You go, what is that? And if you look real close, it's a tiny, tiny baby grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Then they shed that exoskeleton and become larger. They do this several times through the growing season. By the time they get done, you know, by August, they're... They're the size of like, I don't know, golf balls. They're huge. And so if you can put down a bait right now, mm -hmm. even on the biggest of properties, um, if you put down a bait called no-lo bait, N-O-L-O, uh, that bait actually um, will- you they'll, something on your tongue. I, something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But only the people on the, uh, on, the on the video piece can can see that. Well, it's bothering so, me too. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. How do I get into this? <laughs> anyway, uh, we digress. Yeah. yeah, people just change the channel while they're driving right. across to going up to. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I even at? No low bait. Grasshoppers, no low bait. Grasshoppers, no low bait. So you sprinkle this. It's wheat that we've laced with a virus. Uh, that that is very specific, targeted towards grasshoppers and crickets, mainly grasshoppers. But if you've got crickets, it, it take them out too. But they come out at night. And they'll they'll eat some of this no low bait, and they get sick. It takes them a while to die, but they'll stop eating right away. Mm -hmm. And so it takes them about I don't know three, four, five days before they kind of starve to death is how they die. And then um, any eggs that they happen to lay uh, while they're infected are also infected with that virus. So it kind of spreads through the generations. Uh, and then uh, grasshoppers are cannibals. And so if they got a buddy that dropped, other grasshoppers are coming and eat that body, then it spreads that way. So the virus goes through the entire population. It seems to last, they say for a year, a season, I find it gets just over a year. Maybe it'll also affect the next season somewhat. Mm -hmm. So it builds, it helps. Uh, when we lived in Skull Valley, I used to put it down the fence line around the greenhouses. So we had 10 acres. That's a big property. And around us were nothing but cattle ranches. There were no houses, just more ranch land. And so it was like a free for all with your grasshoppers. Right. And so I'd, I'd sprinkle just little tiny piles and don't spread it. Don't spread the flakes, put little piles around and don't put it inside your garden because they're drawn to it. They right. want those oh, tasty. Oh, look, they're putting a meal out for us. Yeah, we are. Have at it, boys. Eat up. Uh, you want to draw them out of the garden. So you put it around the outer edges of the garden. They're drawn to that. 
And then you'll start to see the, the population cleaned up. You might see a few grasshoppers, but it won't be this, the ground is moving kind of stuff. So a couple of important things. We say yeah. it's a virus. So yeah. It oh, that's right. Tends to freak Can't say that anymore. Yeah. So it's very specific to grasshoppers. Right. It does not affect any bird or right. cat or dog that Your husband. eat the grasshopper. Yep. It's Nothing. very specific to them. Yeah. And it's not like it's going to mutate. <laughs> Yeah, it's not COVID. Throughout. It's not COVID. It's just yeah. going after grasshoppers. Yeah, so so grasshoppers, you'll never get rid of all of them. Right. A nuclear holocaust. There's only two two things that will survive at the very end: grasshoppers and ants. Those two things. There's there's no way to get rid of all of them. Yeah. You're just trying to thin them and keep them under control. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, uh, they they you will, will eat have your entire gardens. Yeah. yeah, a pound of of no low bait will cover an acre. So right. if you think in those terms, it kind of helps you. So if you've got a smaller property than that, mm -hmm. keep some in reserve because grasshoppers, they, they have several hatchings a year. So you, you leave some in reserve so you can, you can reapply right. when the next fry stage, that next baby mm -hmm. stage of grasshoppers comes out right. and keep ahead of it. It is a living product. Mm -hmm. You do want to check the date. So we, we just got our shipment in. We've been waiting. So we have the freshest possible virus, I guess, uh, inf flakes. It looks like Wheaties, basically. Right. It's infected with, with a virus. Mm -hmm. Went fresh and it doesn't carry over to the next year. You got to use it all up right now, this year. Right. right. Okay. Within three months. I think we've explained we, we all that. Beat no load to death. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No load. So Marie has a question. She's in Prescott. She had to remove three Leland Cypress. Oh, that hurts. Um, due to the ceridium canker. Yeah. So she's asking, what can she put in that spot? It was kind of a block between her and her neighbor, yeah. something fast growing, disease resistant. What would you recommend? So there's a lot to choose from. Now, Now, first of all, if you have Leland Cypress, we haven't sold those for over five years or more. Uh, we, this, there's, a, there's a canker that's obliterating all the Leland Cypress. It's beautiful green, some of them very mature. We're talking 20 feet tall and 12 feet wide. Been in for 10, 20 years. They're all failing. All of them. There's no cure. And so now what do you do? Well, you buy a new chainsaw, you take them down, and then don't put Leland Cypress back in. That's just, if you still see these sold at the box stores and stuff. It's just, it hurts me. It's just wrong. But anyway, uh, don't put more Cypress in. Put a put a spruce or pine or junipers or what we, we put in, some big blocking thing. All your leafy types of, or deciduous types of plants, uh, aspens, a birch, great choice, very tough, takes the wind and the sun, it takes our soil. There's lots of good choices. I would say take a quick measurement, take a quick picture, mm -hmm. come in and we could really help you to redesign that part of the yard because we use those as windbreaks, uh, privacy screens. We realize your, your yard feels naked. We'll help you or naked. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway we'll part. help you. Yeah. yeah. All right, we have time for one more. Yeah, I think so. All right. So Mark moved in, finally moved into their new home. Yay, in Valley. welcome. He wants to know, is it too late to be putting in some vegetables? Oh, no, not at all. No, we're, what was it, 86 today? I mean, it's just like, it's not that hot. No, watch your watering. But yeah, you can plant right, right now and you'll get great harvest. What you'll find is, okay, you're a month later than everyone else, but everyone else planted first part of May. You're here in June. The soil is warm now, mm -hmm. so things root out really fast. They 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 grow really fast, whereas back in May, yeah, they grew, but they were kind of in slow motion because right. they were cold at night. The soil was was cool, and so you, you're perfectly fine. Same with I know that's vegetables, but trees and shrubs sure. they do the exact same thing. New butterfly bush, crepe mm -hmm. myrtle, they love new grapes, pomegranates, figs. They love being planted while it's warm, while the soil is warm. Yeah. Just be careful to watch your watering. Don't let them dry out. Uh, so so you've got to be more accurate, more spot on mm -hmm. with your watering. You should be fine. Go for it. Welcome to the neighborhood, Mark. All right, Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back.